Good afternoon, John. Great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. We just had a little bit of a chat. I know you're very interested in film, mm -hmm. but uh, you just told me you also were in music. And uh, of course, fashion is your passion. So tell us a little bit more about this. Um, I started out as a musician. Um, I signed a record deal quite young, traveled around Europe and saw some great styles. Um, I then took my career from music to fashion, uh, became a um, personal tailor for two um, global brands and then uh, this year decided to launch my own label and collection. So if we would be talking about a really downtown bar in London, we know there are certain dress codes already out there. I mean, some bars do not allow flip-flops or trainers, which I mm. think is absolutely correct. But at the same time, give us a little hint what you would do if you go out into, let's say, a fantastic five-star hotel bar where you know you're going to meet interesting people, possibly for business or perhaps after business. What would you do? So the first thing is really to, to you know, have a transition between work and evening. I think it's important to wear, you know, a dark suit. I think they always look more chic in the evening. Definitely a midnight blue, midnight navy or a black. It's probably worth taking off uh, the tie as well. I, I'm not a big believer in people socializing in, in a tie. You know, I, I wear my button fastened today on the top, uh, which I think can just look as smart. Uh, but I suppose again, it just takes you away from the sort of working day. Which features could be key features on a person for you? Um, for me, you know, they need to be understated. You know, you need to have um, I don't know, a fifties watch, maybe. You know, an Amiga fifty four Constellation. You know, maybe um, well well groomed hair. That's important. You know, things like, for example, if you if you know stupid things like you go to the bar to buy a drink you know maybe having a you know a, an ostrich foot wallet or uh, if you're going out to smoke a cigarette then you've got a you know a vintage cigarette case you know and th those, those small tiny little details can make a real impression on somebody so this individual styles is this something like your lovely star here on yeah I mean these these are actually um, stud earrings and um, I picked these up from a shop off Carnaby Street called The Great Frog. The idea is that you know I, I, I see people with um, with buttonholes, and chances are they're never going to get used, apart from obviously you know when you're wearing a poppy, but uh, or at a wedding. But I just thought you know just add a little bit of you know a little bit of a, a feature to the lapel. What do you think men do wrong when they get dressed? Uh, most men lack confidence when it comes to style. I think ultimately it just it just requires people to be a little bit more technical in how they buy rather than just rush by rather than jumping out on a Saturday morning got to get a new jumper got to get a new shirt got to get some trousers really really thinking about what it is that you really need to add to your wardrobe and could we say that men should do a business plan and really think about where and how much they invest for what, like they do from Monday to Friday, possibly in their office. That's very true. I think I think when it comes to spending money on clothes, you know, it's it's almost like guys don't set aside money to buy clothes. Guys just don't do that. It's a rush buy. Whereas if each month you set yourself a certain amount of money aside and research what it is you need to buy to add to your existing wardrobe, voila. An interesting point. You know, I, I see people. I see guys walking around. Uh, with the very best technology in the, in you know, whether it be an iPad and an iPhone, and they're willing to spend all this money on this great technology. I think it's the same in, in terms of how you dress. You know, you, you should be working with iconic labels. You should be styling yourself in iconic labels and treating that as seriously as you do te your technology. You think by looking and training your own style, you can actually go and improve yourself. I think it's I think it's um, it's it's your priority to educate yourself how to be a style icon.